guys, so today we are doing tomato sauce. And we'll start by chopping my veggies. We'll go ahead and prep the onion to go in the pan so the oil is already warming up. <coughs> And I went with gloves today because I'm tired of my hands always smelling like onion and garlic a week after I've chopped it. And I've tried lemon juice and I've tried salt and I've tried pretty much everything else that you could possibly try. And none of it works for me. So, I'm going with the gloves. garlic and chop off the root end. There we go. Now to peel these easily all you're going to do is set down the flat side of the knife onto your garlic and you're going to Push away from the blade. Remember that's sharp, be careful. And you're basically just going to kind of smash the garlic. So, there we go. And, there we go. And here you see that is coming off easily. All in one piece, except for that little bit there. Got my glove. And same thing with this piece. Right out of the wrapper, no problem. So, we'll get shoulder tools. Slime, 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 And now that I know the smelly stuff, I can take these off. And make sure to check your onions and getting too brown. Get off of here. Alright, so all that's left are the tomatoes, which you might remember how to do from the ratatouille video. Alright, so everything's chopped up. Um, I'm going to clean up this mess while the onions finish uh, softening up. And then we will move on to the next step. Okay. 
Okay. Oh, perfect. So, I'm not sure if you can see it from that view, but you can see a lot of the liquid is now in the bottom of the pan instead of in the onions. So, and they have softened up considerably. Well, some are still stuck together. But I break all those up. Okay, so next we are going to add our garlic as well as about a tablespoon of Italian seasoning. That looks about right. Teaspoon of oregano, about a half teaspoon of red pepper flake, and a tablespoon of sugar. three minutes or just to start releasing some of the flavor from the garlic and spices. Um, you never want to let it go too long in one spot though because um, each of these things does contain a decent amount of sugar and sugar burns quite easily and there's a difference between browning and burning. So brown is okay, burned is not. Okay. Couple minutes is up. I'm starting to get a little extra color on my garlic in here. Next, I'm going to add pepper and my fresh tomatoes. Possible because we are cooking at lower temperatures. And let's see. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and turn this up a little bit to medium high or medium, sorry, low medium now. So I'm at about three and a half on my dial. And I've recovered and I'm going to let the tomatoes warm up and soften up before adding the canned tomatoes and taking it for a spin in the blender. Um, if I was using crushed canned tomatoes, then I would probably just go ahead and use the immersion blender, but um, these are diced, so I'm going to stick with the regular blender because I do like my sauce to be a little bit smoother. Okay, it's been about 15 minutes or so, and I've stirred this a few times, and let's see, I'm going to need a spoon for this, okay, so, And we're going to set that on a cool burner because anything left on the bottom will get cooked on while 
we are blending. So, go ahead and add our can. And we're going to take this over to the blending station and blend until smooth. Okay, so put this back on the burner. Remove the lid. And be very careful when pouring because this is hot. Okay, so all that's left is to let the canned tomato flavor cook out, which probably will take about 30 minutes or so. Um, we'll leave the cover on long enough for the sauce to warm up again, and then I will cook uncovered for the rest of the period. Okay, my sauce has been cooking down for about half an hour. Um, I went ahead and grabbed some fresh basil out of the garden. And I'm going to give that a quick chop. That is going to cook in there for probably about five minutes or so. Should be good just to get it wilted and to start getting the oils in the leaves um, distributed into the sauce. Yeah, that looks good. In the meantime, I'm going to set up to cool the sauce down for storage. Okay, this has been going long enough. Um, now for storage. Uh, we are not going to, or even though I'm using jars, I'm not going to go through that whole canning process. Um, Basically, canning is to preserve things at room temperature, but the sauce is going to be stored in the freezer anyway, in my case. Apparently trying to get sauce into a jar just results in you burning yourself multiple times because the sauce is hot. Curse you, sauce. Oh, right, since we are storing this, well, I'm storing this in the freezer, I am not going through that whole canning process with the boiling and the sealing and all that stuff. Let's see if I can get this in now. You Okay, so just keep scraping down. into the jar while making as little mess as possible. I have already failed epically in that endeavor, but maybe you can learn from my mistakes. There we go. White edge of jar. Now, although I'm not going to worry about boiling the jar to seal or disinfect or whatever. The fact of the matter is that this is a very hot sauce and if I were to put it straight into the fridge or even the freezer that it would not cool down quickly enough and it would sit in this particular temperature range called the danger zone in which bacteria like to produce like crazy. So, what I'm going to do is do a quick cool, and I'm going to use conduction rather than convection like in the fridge. So, I have here an ice water bath, and I am going to submerge the jar completely. 
and by doing this, the fact that it's liquid cold, um, and then solid glass, and then liquid hot on the other side, um, basically according to thermodynamics, then the heat is going to move out of the sauce into the wa uh, ice water bath, and by the reduction of heat energy within the sauce, it's going to cool down. So, um, we may have to change out the ice water a few times throughout the process just to make sure that it gets down to the correct temperature, but after a few soaks, then it should be ready to go into the freezer without any danger of growing nasty things like botulism. You could also use the sauce immediately. Uh, or even do the same cooling procedure, but store it in the fridge to use sometime within the next week. But I would not go any longer than that without freezing. So I hope you guys enjoyed learning how to make sauce. Um, and I hope that you stay tuned to see how we end up using this in future recipes.